Raleigh scrambled into an unfamiliar vent-like opening in the corridor ceiling in which he was magically suspended as his allies were pulled into the chamber by an unseen force. Following the pathway of the small vent, it led the halfling to an opening in the ceiling of the main chamber directly above the target. Poking his head out, he witnessed his team being slowly pulled towards the rust-red robed cult leader. Clicking his tongue, Raleigh gave a sigh of annoyance. The cultist gave them the numbers advantage by closing the door behind them, and yet he can still hold them off as if they were nothing. Great teamwork, lads. Raleigh spoke under his breath, rolling his eyes in exasperation. Reaching into a hidden holster, the halfling pulled out a sleek metal weapon, a firearm from the nation of the Normerian Federation, one of the only places in the world to use such weapons regularly, and restrictive in selling them in open markets, wishing to keep a distinct technological advantage in a world where swords and sorcery were king and queen. Good thing he was an avid believer of the five-finger discount, keeping his poor defenseless pockets from being drained dry by the ruthlessly greedy merchants of the world. Guess I'll just have to save these sorry buggers again. The halfling relented with a quiet chuckle. He suspended himself from the vent opening by one arm, one hand grasping the inner edge, while the other holding his gun, aiming it at the top of the cultist's head. Throwing another lightning bolt wouldn't help this time, Dramiel wondered, as he and his allies were continually pulled towards the cultist by his power. He couldn't allow them all to continue to be pulled, fearing the void in the cultist's palm could probably swallow them too, as it did all of their attacks. He needed a distraction somehow, he thought, as his eyes wandered toward the ceiling, spotting Raleigh as a loud bang echoed off the walls of the chamber. Blood exploded from the cultist's crown as the bullet bore itself into a skull, ringing their ears with a voluminous howl of pain bellowing from deep within it. There! Dramiel exclaimed to himself as he sprang forward, allowing the dying pull of the rapidly closing void to propel him. With a simple, quick hand gesture, the half-dark elf shouted, Inawe Magike Bolto! He disappeared halfway from his target, reappearing a few feet behind him. Reaching out as he shouted, Polgalmanus! His hand erupted in bright, crackling lightning and shoved it into the back of the enemy's head. Raw electricity poured throughout the cultist's entire body as he stiffened and spasmed uncontrollably. Seeing his own opening for some payback for the redirected lightning bolt, Mithranar pushed off the ground, spinning back onto his feet. In a flash, the tall elf warrior bolted towards the cultist currently being electrocuted, covering the length of the entire chamber in mere seconds. Drawing both his fine elven blades, he angled them, one to cut the cultist's arm off which held the void palm, the other to cut him in half. As Myth's swords were about to strike home, his eyes lit in horror as the cultist's red-veined, monstrous arm suddenly contorted across the cultist's body and grabbed at him. Jumping forward, the elf twisted to the left towards the void palm and spun away from the monster arm, dropping both his arms to his left. As his spin flipped his back toward the ground, the momentum carried his re-angled swords into slicing through the back of both the cultist's knees as Myth continued to travel forward. The cultist fell forward as his legs were literally cut from under him. Sensing the momentum of the cultist's fall, Dram flipped forward, using his spell-delivering hand to vault over him as Idrid took his turn, conveying Paragoth's wrath. By the door, father, give me speed! The war cleric's voice rang in fire towards his enemy as miniature angelic wings appeared on the heels of his boots and the sides of his helmet. As he took a step forward, the small winglets flapped, 
propelling the angry dwarf with supernatural speed. Each step was granted the stride of a long-legged giant as he reached the fallen cultist in nearly a moment. Drawing his blessed warhammer from his back as he strode, he shifted his weight to the side. He swung his hammer like a golf club with the fury of a god as the cultist's head hit the ground. The cultist's head immediately sank into his neck as his body was flung several feet away, tumbling and broken. The little halfling exclaimed as he fell from the ceiling into surprised Edric's arms. We did it, lads! We sure did, little one, Mithranar agreed, his soft voice easily carrying through the eerily quiet chamber. Kipping up from his supine position, the elf warrior brushed himself off and began to saunter over his gathered allies. Now to figure out how to get out of here without being chopped to bits by the rest of the cult. We can take them, I think, Edric suggested and postulated further. If they realize we took down the river, their morale might suffer enough to rout the will of them. That's probably too risky, Drammer butted, shaking his head. We've given ourselves some breathing room. I suggest we use it to grab the cult leader's symbol of chaos and get the hell out of here. Eh, <laughs> here's Rod, I'd imagine. Raleigh piped up with a chuckle and joked. Besides, as much as I like showing you all up, I'd rather not have to save your solid bones from the fire again. Don't worry about it. A mysterious voice answered as Raleigh's eyes dilated in shock. Looking down, his eyes fell onto a straight black blade sticking out of the top of his diaphragm, having burst through his back, right under his heart, running with blood. You'll never have to save your friends, the voice continued as the other spun towards the figure, seemingly flickering into existence at the end of the chamber opposite the door. A handsomely aged man with carbon black arms, dressed in a dark, fur-trimmed, open long jacket as a small sword protracted from the top of his forearm, replacing the one he shot through Raleigh's back. He resumed. From their own stupid decisions again. Hello there. I'm the lore master of the Lore Keeper's Library, and today we will continue our presentation on the lore of Monty Cook's Chaosatech. This is part three of the Chaosatech lore series of the Dungeons and Dragons lore archive. The Bones of Steel. As you may be already aware, but not please refer to Chaos Attack Part 1 of this lore archive. Many Chaos Attack devices are generally constructed of mostly non-organic components like metals and glass. They're seemingly generally uncomplicated because of their superficial similarity to more common devices and weapons like crossbows or clockworks. Bones of steel are objects of chaos, which can generally be picked up figured out and used by most people, so long as they can actually figure out how to use the thing. People in the general know will look for this type of familiar Chaos Attack out first, because the other type is, well... I'll talk about that later. Bones of Steel are basically machines which run on the entropic energies of Chaos itself. With proper uh, training, these things can be repaired, refueled, or even built using proper tools and what have you. Those who actually get to see a Chaos Attack object at all, because they're rare as hell, may notice bones of steel are held together with bolts and clamps with insides filled with a clutter of wires, tubes, and bewilderingly spinning apparati. When held, the bones of steel may set the user on edge with headaches and muscle aches, making weird, whack-ass noises and giving off metallic or acrid odors. At a glance, the layman concerning magical affairs may understandably mistake in Chaosatec's exotic effects as magic. They would be fucking wrong. Chaosatech objects are not objects of magic. They can't generally be affected by spells that 
specifically affect magic. You can't dispel chaotic objects with effects. Most magical effects that can protect you from magic fuckery, which is similar to chaotic objects effect, actually wouldn't apply to the chaotic effect. For example, the spell non-detection protects the targets from certain divinations. It wouldn't work against the Chaosic object known as Long Range Tracker, which has similar powers of divination. Magical and technological effects, which grant protection against different types of damage, still provide the protection against the type of damage that a Chaosic object may deal. Protection from energy fire, for example, still provides protection against fire damage originating from a Chaosic object. Also, chaos like objects are never masterwork items. They're not made with tender loving care by dedicated smiths or anything, but can be turned into magical items with the use of proper specialized knowledge. Activation Activating a chaos tech object often takes at least a little bit of effort. They're not really uh, logical, one would say. Some might just need to be worn or activated by switches in an exacting order, or two switches simultaneously, or a series of levers and dials, or even plugging it into your head through a crazy ass implant called a head clamp. Even two devices with congruent functions are often, if not pretty much always, have different appearances and means of using the thing. These devices are not at all like conventional technology, being made by people or creatures with a distinct lack of mental stability. Along with Kale's attacks, the unconventional activation methods, people dealing with objects of chaos gotta be hella careful with their use, because a lot of things could happen to them. For one, they could just fail out of nowhere. They can be completely drained of power without warning, or even melt overload and even fucking explode, causing massive amounts of damage to anyone and anything around the device. The dangers of Chaos Attack and Chaos. Its power source, Raw Chaos, is in and of itself extremely dangerous, being able to simply destroy anything it touches, save for Chaos Storage Cubes. These gray, featureless, smoothless three-foot cubes can only be tapped using a Chaos Siphon or the Siphon Spell, allowing relatively safe refueling of Chaos Attack devices. If you try and, you know, puncture the cube, you fucking die. The Chaos Liquid can spill everywhere damaging and destroying everything, including you. Even the fucking ground isn't safe. With a corrosive, extra-dimensional sludge being able to eat through multiple floors. Even the air is yeeted by exposed raw chaos because it destroys all the air around it. Put like an ounce, about 28 grams to you crazy people to fuss bomb, of it in a sealed 10-foot cube for about five hours. That isn't a storage cube, by the way. And it's gone. All the air, gone. Leaving nothing but a vacuum. Kalesec itself is so damn dangerous, even being around it could change the way you look, the way you think, or even break all your shit. All of it, after a month, of even being five feet from it, much less actually using it for an hour a day. You could potentially get mutations. Not 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 the cool shit like X gene mutation. Well, actually. But more than likely the you're now a disgusting blob of living meat and flesh kind of mutations. After three months your entire outlook on life is completely shifted towards chaos. The only types of people not affected are those with an already chaotic outlook that aren't necessarily good people either. 
even a freedom love American who might have a moral outlook to defend the freedom of others could be changed to think so why the hell do I care about the freedom of the people again after a month of your hard-worn stuff being constantly exposed to chaos attack it starts to crumble away the longer your stuff stays near it the faster your stuff crumbles a vault made of stone or even iron can be completely screwed after about a hundred years or even just crumble to dust trying to master the knowledge about chaos attack just melts your brain in a schizo induced insanity you can become insane after about a year or so of, of fiddling with chaos attack if you can cast magic though it doesn't hamper it even the magic clerics aren't hampered of course your mental shift may cause your god and with it your entire religion to see you as an unforgivable heretic or apostate but whatever you have better powers anyway now right Chaos Attack examples. I will list, in my mind, the coolest, as the fellow kids say, bones of steel Chaos Attack that I find utterly fascinating. These aren't all of them, mind, but they are some of the most rad shit in the book. Chain Blade. The forces of chaos from Warhammer 40,000 would see the chain blade as an acceptable weapon of glorious melee. Except that it's rather small for a traitor marine, being only the size of a bastard sword. As the name suggests, it has a cutting chain like a chainsaw with a lead bar in the shape of a sword. With a switch on the pommel activates the chain. Simply apply it to enemy flesh and you're good to go. Be careful not to apply it to something with way too much armor on, or the chain will stop. Anyone without proper training will eventually just end up breaking the damn thing. Life Chewer Grinding Sword The Life Chewer Grinding Sword is like a regular grinding sword, which is the long sword that you literally plug into your head. When you stab someone through with a grind sword, you can mentally activate it to have the blade spin on the hilt axis causing devastating internal organ damage. A life chewer not only does that, but appropriates life and fatality from the opponent, giving it to you, leaving you strengthened and revitalized, while leaving your opponent desiccated and sad. Cohesion Blaster Imagine having a rod with a bowl-like tip that can generate a gray bulb of energy that can deliver the most gruesome agonizing gory death that you can imagine from a hundred feet away that's the absolute fucking nightmare that the cohesion blaster can conjure up if your enemy doesn't have the fortitude to withstand deus ex's great death that is the cohesion blaster's attack the enemy just falls apart they literally lose cohesion falling apart into a dead flesh movie Jesus Christ, Maria. Even if the enemy does have the fortitude to withstand body cohesion failure, they still take ludicrous amounts of bodily harm and can still just die from sudden physical trauma. Emitters. Emitters, what I like to call pupus, are two headed magical wands, except sci fi or more like the fantasy science. And they're not magic, obviously that can easily deliver a highly diverse plethora of a bad day to your enemies within 200 feet. Delivering bad days, like making your enemies so sick they can do nothing but vomit up mom's spaghetti, blind the shit out of them, knock them on their ass, freeze them, electrocute them, stun or paralyze them, or even liquefy their metal swag, are the part and parcel of fighting crazy ass chaos worshipping dicks and the many worlds of Dungeons and Dragons. The one that can make the world-class gymnasts and acrobats stumble around and trip over their own feet like a centipede version of Goofy with the same shoe size as Robert Radlow is definitely my favorite. Bombs. Like the emitters, 
pills like bombs come in a variety of flavored death. Like making your enemies just literally not want to fight anymore. Just standing there all calm and serene. And ready to happily take your giant life true grinding sword down their hungry gaping throats. Catching opponents on fire, freezing them, subjecting them to electrocution, blinding them with like four different flavors in and of itself. Why the hell would you have four different bombs that just blind people? I don't fucking know. Trapping them in a global force? Infesting them with tiny robot scarabs? Rotting them from the inside out? Shutting them the hell up? Like literally killing all sound with the explosion radius. May just get fucked. Or just driving everyone within the blast zone into a murderous, rampaging madness. Yeah, these bombs are overpowered to hell, because they're like magic, but like all cancer tech, can't be affected by things that affect magic. Like anti-magic field and shit. You don't believe me? Well, I got two words for you. Void bomb. Yeah, a damn explosive that creates a singularity that just bifelicias everything around it. And draws everything in within 20 feet of the blast, just... Holy fucking shit. Armor and shields. Don't get me started on the armor. The animated shell is just power armor Shadow the Hedgehog might appreciate. It's more protective than full plate armor, makes you physically stronger, and lets you both run and march twice as long. If you're a gentleman of culture and don't wish to wear garish metal over your perfectly supple skin, you can simply wear a set of bracelets and ankles connected by thin cords to a collar connected to your brain by a head clamp and just imagine you have armor on and it just works the protection from thought armor <laughs> is correlated to the size of your IQ so the smarter you are the more powerful the force field surrounding you would be the wizard the guy who can tell physics to shut up and sit the hell down is already strong enough. This makes being an armor-wearing, knuckle-dragging sword man that can get stabbed by a blade the size of a giant's dong and giggle not even worth it anymore. Too lazy to carry your shield? Plug it into your head and let your imaginary squire carry it for you, defending your life. Or just upgrade your already ridiculous edgelord pattern power armor and connect an animated shield arm to it and let that carry the shield. Miscellaneous devices. Cool little doodads that can help it thrust a common brains out of a skull or a thing, like the attack sphere. A ball the diameter of an official boulder, that's a thing, can fly towards an enemy and lovingly caress them with their wicked razor blades and fish hooks, supersonic spinning its whole mass and grinding it against an opponent's soft, squishy body for a whole goddamn minute. Do you have shitty virgin level human grade night sight? Unlike your Chad half orc or dwarf party members who have giga Chad level eyes that can see in the dark? A darkness in Viber is the solution you need with the ability to absorb the darkness surrounding it. Yeah, it absorbs literal nothingness because you know darkness is the absence of something named the light which is energy and turns it into light. It's powerful enough to absorb any level of darkness, including magically generated darkness of any power level. That crazy darkness spell with the ability to even defeat any form of light, including magically created light with the brightness of the sun? The darkness in Viber, finna dab on that darkness, brah. Not only that, it can spit it hot, upgrading the darkness from the darkness it absorbed into an impenetrable darkness that same spell of sunlight that was defeated by that crazy level of darkness spell? Uh, that, yeah, I can do that too. The see in darkness ability expressed by many demons of the abyss. Wanna traverse in this darkness? Blind as a fucking bat when they enter the radius of impenetrable darkness. It's not even considered magic darkness either, which is generally even more dark than pitch black. You need to capture some incorporeal entity? The ghost trap's got your back. Yeah, that one. I wonder if Egon Spengler was really a chaos technician. He definitely wasn't sane enough. 
that's not crazy enough for you? How about a colossal, freakish centipede-like armored personnel carrier that can send bolts of lightning through its antenna up your enemy's asses, ribbing and tearing everything with ro robotic manacles, while dropping 24 heavily armed murder hobos into your enemy's doorstep? Yeah. The War Strider's got your back, dog. Don't want to have to deal with accidentally burning your nuts off trying to refuel Kale's tech device with liquid raw chaos? Try a demonic converter, which lets a Kale's tech device run off of demon power instead. Want to not deal with OP mages? How about a magical scrambler, giving you the ability to just say no to magic? Then have someone else eat it, even the original caster. Need some conventional steampunk clockwork crap to work better? How about plugging it in a possession nodule, allowing a fucking ghost to possess it, making it better and better at what that conventional technology does? Seriously, Mom, because what the living fuck? Don't really feel like fighting that fantasy version of the X-Men? Try a mutation nullifier, where it'll tell them to set the hell down and shut the hell up for a bit, suppressing mutant powers for up to a minute, within 50 feet of it. Need extra protection against mutants? The Mutation Scrambler is just like the Magic Scrambler, but against mutant powers and permanent until they run away from it. Should be enough time to stab all those fools in the gooch, right? Dude, Chaos Attack is just absolute insanity. If you come across any of this stuff during your adventures, just... just don't, alright? Unless you like to party with the power of the gods in your hands, then Oonga Boonga you got them right away! The brightest star burns out the fastest, so burn the brightest! Live like a god and ride that train until it wrecks and it all comes tumbling down. <laughs> <laughs> By the gods! What the hell am I reading? I still have the betrayal of flesh to present. And I'm laughing like a madman and speaking like some unprofessional rambling idiot. Well, I simply must finish this archival section. Gods above help me. <laughs>